Yamaha is becoming quite popular in the experimental class of aviation. In this week's episode, we stop by to see a Just Aircraft Highlander being built by Craig Tim. Craig is a man who is passionate about exotically engineered vehicles. He recently traded up from Highline to a Highlander aircraft. So today I'm in Umatilla, Florida. I stopped by Craig Tim's shop and he's working on a Highlander. But as you can see, he's got a Yamaha. Hang on the nose of this thing. We're gonna dive in deep to his build right now. I'm Craig Tim, welcome, and uh, I'm building a Just Aircraft Highlander here with an Apex 150 engine in it, and I guess we're going to show you a couple things that I've done and make it make it work. Well, <coughs> I ended up buying this uh, uh, from Billy Payne up at Plain Fun Aircraft. I drove up there during this COVID thing and I wanted a project to do, and I thought this would be a good little project, and this ended up being uh, a little bit more project that I had bargained for. This was a fully operating aircraft, uh, with a Viking 110 engine in it. Billy took me up, we had a good time. And when I got it back, I thought, well, you know, I wanted to make some improvements to it. And as I started looking, the previous owner or two had done things that weren't up to a standard that I liked. So I started with wiring and uh, decided to redo the wiring. And then that trans morphed into, well, well, I've got it that far, let me replace the engine. Well, now that I've got that out, well, let me just break it down to the everything and break it down to the basic hull and fabric and just pretty much rebuild the whole plane. And what made you decide to uh, swap out the, the engine? Just simply more power or? I think that the biggest reason, I mean, Viking's a great engine. You know, I love it. I think it's simple, easy to work on. But I had started reading some of the Yamaha Apex forums and I thought 150 horsepower, lighter weight, uh, this aircraft weighed about 789 pounds according to the weight and balance and I thought I could get it down a little bit less. So my goal is shooting for around 725 with this fully fully loaded Apex and not really skimping on anything inside. No creature comforts or anything. I'm just trying to get the weight down to where uh, it'll be a bigger performer. And the Viking climbed it. Uh, I was doing 1,000 feet per minute, 1,100. This one hopefully should do 1,800, 2,000 feet per minute on a climb. So we just have to see. Plus I've got wings modified and slats and everything else on it too. So Craig, obviously there's a, a lot of things that you've done uh, as a new owner to this airplane to inspect and also customize it. Uh, what did you do and where did you start off in the interior to make it custom and also inspect? Well, obviously we pulled all, I pulled all the panels out 100%. All, everything's been taken out of the airplane. I've taken it down to just real, realistically just the tubes and the fabric. I mean, it's been 100% uh, taken apart. Cables have been replaced as required. But, you know, it, originally when this aircraft came out, it was covered with, uh, you know, the, the carpet inside and everything. And so I removed that and wanted to remove the weight on it. Um, I still have the original seat covers in here. These are getting replaced and we're making custom ones now. And control stick boots have got to be done yet. Um, made closeouts out of ABS plastic and bins underneath the seats out of ABS plastic. Uh, all the floor panels are new uh, because the old ones were all dented up and they had old powder coat on so it was just easier to start with new. I modified in the back access to the uh, aileron horn in the back a bigger panel uh, like I've seen other people do. Uh, just for seat belts for instance. Normally seat belts just flop in the back and some guys will just use bungees I took a piece of carbon fiber rod, ran the bungee through it, bungee cord basically, and so now the seats are still supported and we've got, you know, movement as required. Um, things, other things that I've done, uh, door frames, and you can pull out and see that I wanted to be able to have uh, properly closing doors that sealed well, kept the weather out, kept the wind out, uh, put side windows in. One of the biggest things people do like to custom is the instrument panel and you of course have done something very custom so talk to me about what you've done in front of and behind your instrument panel. 
Well, I think the biggest thing was I liked the glass panels. These had this had steam gauges in it. It did have a good EFIS in it by MGL, and I did like that. But I wanted something different, and I wanted to be kind of 21st century as opposed to 20th century stuff. So I went with uh, dual iPads in the system, running an EFIS system. One side will be four flight, the other one will be the EFIS. And I've made my own custom uh, removal mounts that you could put a 10.2 iPad in or the iPad mini, the 4.5. And so these will run full EFIS. And then I've had custom, these are actually to my spec uh, with the text and custom rocker switches that I've actually had made. I did keep the MGL radio because it's a very light and small profile radio and I upgraded to a Garmin just a 327. So Craig, one of the things I saw from your, your posts on social media is just how attention to detail and neat your installation has been so far. And I uh, can see your behind your, your instrument panel as just as clean. So tell me a little bit about your thought process of how you laid this out and hiding things and keeping things clean behind the panel. Well, the reason this whole project got started was because of the electrical wiring. Uh, the previous owner and builder added things on to the wiring harness that were just not not aircraft safe, just not safe in general. So that's how this all got started with the whole refit on the whole aircraft. So I like to keep everything as neat as possible. So under the cowl, I, I put a shelf in here. This will house this houses the main bus bars, and as well as the ECU for the engine and the wiring that's not required to operate to be able to maintain maintain very much. Hey everyone, let me take just a moment here to thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Clemens Insurance Agency, Whelan Aerospace Technologies. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. Talk to me about what you've done to the wings. Well, these wings are already covered, so that's a, that was a problem to begin with. So, Steve Henry makes these leading edge cuffs that he markets and sells, and I've went ahead and installed these with a 3M 5200, and which is a permanent bonding solution. And then they've been blended in, so they're, again, because the wing has already been covered, it's been a pretty difficult installation trying to get it, you know, as smooth as possible. Also, this is getting carbon concept slats. So using Steve Henry's brackets that he makes for the carbon concept slats. Uh, I've got these all mounted out and I'm just waiting to reinstall it after I do the wrap on the plane. The reason I stay with the tricycle gear, we're in Florida. So pretty much we don't have public spaces to land on empty fields unless you're invited. So we're pretty restricted on that. However, where I live in central Florida, there are three or 400 lakes, which is perfect. And eventually this is going to get converted to float. So I went with the tricycle gear initially and left it there. But I went ahead and rebuilt complete landing gear system, all new bungees, new brakes, new rotors, and the wheels that are, these are the stock tires, the 700s, 706s. What, uh, what kind of color scheme are you going to do with this thing? Well, I'm not repainting anything. No? There's going to be no paint on this plane. Okay. So, I'm going to sand out where the, where the where the where they've overlapped the paint. I've sanded out the runs from the previous builder, and I will get it uh, 320 wet dry smooth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the entire airplane. It's the future. If I don't like it, I can change it easily enough. And I'm not going to spend 10, 12 grand painting. I am going to spend two or three grand wrapping. So I kind of wanted an in-your-face color. So this is going to be a tri-color scheme. And this is going to be the, you can see the turtle deck's already done, and this is the, for, the, for those who are colorblind, this is super bright. If you take this out in the sun, it actually burns your retinas. That's how bright this <laughs> is. And I'm not kidding about this either. So <laughs> basically, the, the turtle deck goes out, and this is going to be a swoop up, up into the tail with the orange. Uh, the gray will be at the bottom, and there'll be a black stripe different, you know, separating the two colors. It'll be, you know, swoopy, uh, aircraft style. Same thing with the leading edge. Uh, you know, that'll be, a, that'll be a piece of wrap over the front. All right, and now what everybody's been waiting for this entire video for you to talk about is this Yamaha hanging on the front of your firewall. So tell us where you got it, how you acquired it, and why you chose it in the first place. Well, I saw a Facebook post up in the Yamaha for sale section for the aircraft stuff. Guy put it up. One hour later, this was mine. 
We just negotiated back and forth, picked it up. Uh, 689 miles on the engine, which is nothing. Whether he wrecked it or not, don't know, 2006 engine. But I got every component, every hose, every wire, everything required. I didn't leave anything behind because I don't know what I did. I didn't know what I was going to need. And uh, so after that, got it back, cleaned it up. And as some of the people know, I went ahead and painted the block, uh, done a couple other things to it, just a few, to make it a little bit nicer. It is a 150 horsepower Yamaha Apex 2006 and uh, Skytrex gearbox. Uh, what a nice piece of machine art that is all by itself. Um, I carbon dipped the uh, rocker covers and wrapped, <coughs> made a custom uh, intake cover here for, not an intake cover, but a, a fuel injection cover to hide all the ugliness uh, underneath and the injectors and everything, the wiring custom air filter intake uh, system that I made up, as well as all the hoses, radiator, the radiator mounts, oil tank. I mean, there's not too much things on this engine I really haven't touched. I didn't break the block open, obviously, but everything else has been done on the engine. Yeah, the radiator is, uh, looks to be purpose-built, but where did you acquire that from? Uh, as having owned a ZX-14 in the past, I had been looking at the cowl, and um, to see if I could get anything in there because, because the tricycle gear created a whole bunch of different problems that weren't anticipated. Um, normally the radiator would mount underneath uh, the firewall area and uh, there's no room because the tricycle gear takes up that and it cuts through up into, the, up into the mount area and everything else. So this is out of a ZX-14 and I made, uh, and it comes like this with the curve anyway. That's, that's as far as it does. It comes like this. But all the radiator mounts are on the other side of the uh, radiator as well as the radiator cap. And I've eliminated everything on the other side, including the radiator cap and the vent. And I've relocated the hose outlets to the, to the side that's required. And it just came out perfect. I mean, it fits within a half an inch of the cowl. And I still got to make a couple little rubber pieces up here to really seal it off. But it's going to work very well. So it's designed for 1.4 liters. This is one liter, so we should have more than adequate cooling. So Craig, the only experience I really have so far with Yamahas is the, the trendsetter here with Steve Henry. Yep. And he runs a fully open exhaust with his turbo now because obviously he does a high competition stole. You've got a full length header and a muffler. Talk to us about your exhaust system for a minute. Well, you could buy an existing header anywhere from made for the specifically for the apex anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars well i am on a little bit of a budget even though it doesn't kind of look like it you know and i wanted to be able to experiment on my own i don't want to just sit there and buy something if i can make it so uh i did some research and this is off of suzuki samurai uh, the late 80s early 90s stuff and it's a four it's a four into two into one so Two pipes go into one, and then the two separate pipes go into the collector. And I did use, a, I had to recut the flange off, and I reused the Yamaha flanges. And you know, one of my welds wasn't pretty, so I decided to wrap it, and that came out pretty nice as well. But I did use, a, instead of bolts, which normally Yamaha come with, I did use studs. And the advantage of studs is um, it's just a lot easier to get it off. The gasket sets in place. You don't have to fuss with it. And these are the little copper nuts you see here are from a BMW. They are 10 millimeter out OD and 8 millimeter ID, and they are designed for BMW exhaust. They are copper, so they won't seize to the studs. So just kind of a nice little thing. I've done that in my automotive thing. So I wrapped the header, and it is a stock header with the exception of the flange. Now you do have to cut a pipe, in other words, to get it to expand to the pattern a little bit, but nonetheless. I made a little uh, Z bracket under there, and then this is. Um, uh, 2007, 2006 through 2008 Suzuki Hayabusa muffler that was a takeoff back in the day. And it's brand new in the box. I got two of them. I moved one on. So I custom made a bracket as well for the, for the mount that mounts to the Highlander as well as the, the um, flange. And it's got a, um, a mesh joint on it to absorb any vibrations and everything. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't crack, but we'll see. But the nice part about this header was it was $125. I didn't spend $1,000. I didn't spend $2,000 on this header. If it does not work, I will throw it in the trash and I will just buy or have built a custom header that would be appropriate. But if it works, I'm ahead of the game by at least 1000 bucks. So that's kind of where my thought process was on that.
So let's dive a little bit deeper into the, the knowledge that you have uh, obtained in purchasing this engine and also just from your automotive uh, racing history or ownership history. This has a, a dry sump oil system. Talk to me a little bit about the pumps internal and external on oiling this, oiling this engine. Well, you know, it's a snowmobile. They jump, they jump sand, they ju jump, uh, what is it, snow drifts. We don't have any of those in Florida, but they jump them. Anyway, they do hill climbs, they do all sorts of things. So Florida being flat, we don't have any of that. But for an aircraft use, it's great. So it's a dry sump system, which means the oil is not retained in the oil pan, it's retained in an oil tank. Subsequently, the internals of the engine on this particular one has a, a pressure pump, just like any other engine has, as well as a scavenge pump. So that what one does is pressurize the journals and the bearings and everything. And the other, one, the other section of the pump is used to remove the oil from the pan, because there is really no pan on this engine per se. It'll hold maybe half a quart, that's it. So after that, it goes back into this oil tank. And because, again, going back to the tricycle gear, and that's caused a lot of things, a radiator and this oil tank. So if I didn't have to modify, if I didn't have the tricycle gear, I could have just used the stock Apex tank right off the bat, didn't have to make anything. But because I have the tricycle gear strut going through this area, I couldn't mount the tank. So I ended up making a custom tank. It looks flat on this side, and it is, but on this side here, you'll see it's, a, it's two triangles basically put together. So the oil is uh, pre fed to the pump out of the bottom, and the return is at the top, and that's internally baffled. So it, even though it, what you see on the external tank, there is a perforated tube. There's a section in there that keeps the oil that returns uh, from sloshing around and splashing. And the other two are for vents, and they part of the apex venting system from the factory. And then it breathes up through the, goes into the air intake system as well for part of the final breathing. And this is the factory uh, oil level sensor that I've also got hooked up. And that also doubles as the oil fill for the tank. And the normal drain, drain valve, drain plug on the bottom, that also drains the tank. So capacity on this tank, actually, I'm running five and a half quarts, uh, but it will hold six. So as part of this radiator system, I also manufactured all the custom hoses and everything and made T fittings and everything before, but this also is running the Evans coolant in it, which is a waterless coolant. It gives you a higher boiling point, but the nice part about it, in my opinion, is that the system has no pressure. Uh, in other words, there is no radiator cap on this system. It is running because there's no steam, there's no water. Water, water expands and contracts, that's how you get ice and steam. Well, this one doesn't do any of that. It stays there. Now, the, the coolant does expand slightly, and there is a slight expansion tank, but there is absolutely no pressure in this system whatsoever other than the pressure that the water pump may supply to the system itself to move the water around. So it's just running a straight vent, and I got that from a couple other engine builders out there, and I thought it was a great idea before, and I still think it is now. So there's no strain on these hoses. Uh, there's never any pressure. These hoses should technically, other than them actually degrading over time, uh, should last the lifetime of the engine. All right, so something else I see different here is your intake plenum compared to some of the other Yamahas. Talk to us about what you've done on your intake. Well, the biggest problem, again, it, it's all back to this tricycle gear. It, it's caused a plethora of problems. So the stock Yamaha box wouldn't fit. The, eight, uh, the R1 box modified wouldn't fit. So. I didn't want to make an aluminum tank because aluminum air intake system because I kind of didn't like the way it looked. Um, I do like carbon fiber, however, this is not, this is just a wrap. But I, I've used the stock intake horns that come on the Apex. And I left them exposed because this looks like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. And I just thought that was cool looking. So rather than bringing this all the way up to where the mount goes, I actually brought the air filter assembly down. Um, this is a four inch diameter piece of PVC tube. Now it is braced and it, it's solid, it's isolated however, but uh, so there's plenty of air intake or air velocity through the system and enough CFM through the system. This is a four inch diameter tube. Well, this is a one liter engine, a four inch diameter tube they use on LS7 Corvettes and those are seven liter engines basically, seven liter, yeah. And they're running a four inch diameter tube. so. Uh, we're not going to run out of air starvation in any way, shape, or form with this. We could have actually cut the size in half. And on the front of it then, I've got a K&N filter, which is mounted up. And that has a little bit of rubber isolation in it as well. 
and that should keep it from separating. I did also want to cover the fuel injectors and I made up a little plate, roll formed it, made some brackets and to hide all the fuel injector and all the fuel injection wiring. So really when you open the cowl and run this, uh, you, should be, you should be pleased with what you see. Well, this is a Steve Henry mount. And there's no better expert, in my opinion, in a Highlander market in a stole competition than Steve Henry. I mean, it's proven. So he's designed this mount, and what's nice about the Apex is the distance between, he's got this engine as far back as it can go, pretty much. I mean, there is literally, I don't think I can get my pinky between the back of the stator case and the firewall. And I thought it was three quarter, but actually it's more like a half an inch. So he's got this engine shoved all the way back as far. And what he's used instead of putting the engine forward is he's got a prop spacer out. So I believe this is a four or five inch prop spacer on the front. Well, this airplane runs 10, 15 pounds of lead with the engine that was in it. So the Viking weighed about 220, all wet. This one weighs 180 wet, according to numbers that we've gotten. So I'm hoping that, and I actually I know that I can take the lead out of the tail. So now I can take 10 or 15 pounds of lead out of the tail. I've cut 30, 40 pounds off the front of the plane, 10, 12, 15 pounds off the back, plus all the electronics. I think I've reduced the weight on this, hopefully about 50, 60 pounds at least, you know, and still maintaining what you see, you know, without having to sacrifice really anything. You know, that's where it comes in at. Craig, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to give us a in-depth tour of your airframe and engine. Um, where do you post most of your updates these days for engine work, airframe work, and just to kind of keep people informed of what you're doing? Pretty much, I, I'm doing everything on the Yamaha, or the Yamaha, the Facebook pages for the Yamaha engines, and also in the Just Aircraft. I do some posts on the Kitfox stuff and some of the Xena stuff because this also transposes into the other airframes as well. And people should be aware of these great engines that are out there now that technology's come up with and the people that are supporting them have done. Great, great. Well, do me a favor and reach out to me when this thing is flying so I can come back and uh, we can see this thing in the air. I'll let you fly it. <laughs> Excellent, thanks. And uh, we'll follow up again in the near future. Very good, I appreciate you coming out and spending the time. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I invite you to subscribe, like, and hit all those notifications. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.